So this is actually the OpenStax textbook that we're using. I believe this is chapter 9 for measurements. This took me a while to catch on here on the sign here that this is Finnish. I've been there once a long time ago. And here you have kilometers. You can kind of see it hidden here and then they left it out here. They assume that people know it as kilometers. Notice the comma here. In the United States we use actually a period there so it would be 0 0.5 kilometers for some reason. In Finland, apparently, in Germany, too, we use 0, 0,5 kilometers. I do like the point better of having a period there because it's a real break in between as many kilometers and as many parts of a kilometer. All right, got to get beyond this image here. All right, some cheese here. They show here that you have on the scale kilograms and pounds. Notice 5 kilograms, 11 pounds. This must be an American scale as there is 2.2 pounds as a kilogram. The two shouldn't be confused actually. Kilogram is a mass, pound actually is a force or a weight. By the way, as the pound is not being used in Germany for example anymore, you can still actually go to a store and ask for 10 pounds of potatoes and you will get 10 pounds which is 5 kilograms. Notice that there is a conversion factor of 1 to 2 for the so-called German pound which technically doesn't exist anymore but we still use it. All right, scroll down a little bit here. I'm going to get all beyond that. You will find quite a few conversion calculators online as you need them. This apparently here is on Google but and they're pretty good. You know, just Google the right thing, centimeters to inches or something. Let's see, I'm going to scroll through here, and oh, yep, yeah, there we go. So that's a little bit of history, trying to implement the metric system in the United States, and as you know, as you see, it failed. However, since 1992, it is actually the system in the United States as well. It's just that we don't use it in everyday life. And here what I highlighted, so there was a decision followed intensive lobbying by American businesses whose factory used machinery designed to use customary measurements by workers trained in customary measurements. And I kind of agree with that. Yes, you would have to retrain everyone and that costs a lot of money and resources. But on the other hand, because the metric system is so much easier, multiplying by 10 or 100, divide by 100, divide by 10 and so on. The conversions are so simple, it really isn't that hard. On the other hand, if you continue doing that, which we've been continuing doing that for decades, for centuries now in the United States, using the American system where you have these strange conversions, well, you make mistakes. And you always need some table and some calculator. You cannot just shift the decimal point. And that is actually cost the American economy quite a bit of money. So to me, that really is not the greatest argument. Yes, there is some truth behind it, but it really costs the American economy a lot. And there are lots of American businesses that actually use the metric system. Okay, there's a second sentence that I highlighted here. There was also intense public pressure from American citizens who didn't want to go through the time-consuming and expensive process of changing the country's entire infrastructure. What I'm thinking about here are, for example, road signs. Okay, yes, it would cost money, but it's a one-time thing. You would only do it once. What I really disagree with this particular sentence, int intense public pressure from American citizens, is that in our everyday life, it really doesn't matter if we use miles or kilometers, if we use pounds or kilograms, it really doesn't affect us much. The ones that are really affected by it are the ones who deal with measurements every single day in their job, like myself, teaching physics and math, someone working in a factory, someone working in a hospital, someone working in technology, where they have to make all kinds of conversions, and they are really appreciate the metric system. So this particular one is really not a good argument for me to keep the metric system out. Because in our everyday life, if we measure the distance of kilometers or miles, no big deal, doesn't really matter. So might as well go with the kilometers and the meters and the grams and the kilograms. Because it's the other people, it's the people who work in the industry that really need that. All right, talked enough about this. Going to scroll down here. And we are at the problems here. I'm just highlighted a few here. Which metric base unit would be measured, would be used to measure the height of a door? Well, meters. 
you know, about 1.8 meters, 2.0 meters, that kind of thing, which metric base units would be used to measure your weight. Kilograms, okay, here I need to point something out. I think I have that somewhere here. The kilograms versus the points. Oh, I think it's going to come up. i do that later. So kilograms. And then here, for following this, determine the base unit metric. Choose from liter, gram, or meter. The word I disagree with here, by the way, it's not a base unit because the, the meter is, but the liter and the gram are actually the derived units from the meter, meter cubed, respectively, from the kilogram. Shift the decimal point. Amount of soda in a bottle, well, that would be in liters. Weight of a book you're mailing, well, that would be in grams. Amount of gasoline you need to fill a car's tank, well, it would be in liters. Height of computer desk, meters, and so on. All right, go to the next section here. All right, let's see. And again, I'm going to scroll down to my highlights. So apparently this is about area, and I really haven't highlighted much at all here. It's just there's a lot of computations in here and notice that I do this particular unit a little bit different with all these regression curves and measuring and so on so I can skip quite a bit here for the following exercise determine the most reasonable value for each area bedroom wall that would be in the neighborhood of 12 square meters for example 4 times 3 square meters which is about 12 by 9 feet that sounds about right city park Actually, it's the 1,200 square meters, which is actually a small one. It's about the size of just 10 houses. 1,200 kilometers, by the way, is way too big for a city park. So I would even say that this one is a little bit small. Kitchen table in the neighborhood of 2.5 square meters. This one here, by the way, would be in the neighborhood of like one square inch or a little bit less. So it's ought to be 2.5 square meters, which is about 25 square feet. That's 5 by 5. That's a pretty big pretty good size table yet yeah. all right and then here's some more such exercises and notice I'm going through these here actually pretty quickly except for what I did earlier about what I think about that it should be implemented to the metric system in the United States all right let's see scrolling through here so this is volume notice they don't do everything here they don't even do the derived units so they just throw this at us so for following exercises, determine the most reasonable value for each volume. I will go with the 50,000 cubic centimeters. Here, if I take the cubic root of this one here, which even for me is a little bit hard, it's going to be 10 times 10 times 10, a little bit more maybe. So 20 times 20 times 20, 20 centimeters. That's going to give me the neighborhood of 8, oh, that, that's only 8,000 um, cubic centimeters, by the way. So I make it 30. That's 27,000 cubic centimeters. So that's about a foot by foot by foot. That kind of sounds like a terrarium, right? Uh, milk carton, that was the ill again. Should really get rid of it. 236 milliliters, large fraction of a liter. That would be a milk carton. Box of crackers, neighborhood of 1,500 cubic centimeters, probably 10 times 10 times 10. Yeah, that's about four inches by four by four inches, yeah. All right. So here we have grams and kilograms. See our highlight a little bit. All right, so I'm going to read the highlighted part. Any discussion about metric weight must also include a conversation about mass. Scientifically, mass is the amount of matter in an object, whereas weight is the force exerted on an object by gravity. So weight and force take on the same units. The amount of mass of an object remains constant no matter where the object is. And then, since there's no easy way to measure mass, and since gravity is just about the same no matter where on earth you go, people in countries that use the metric system often use the words mass and weight interchangeably, but scientifically the kilogram is only a unit of mass in everyday life is often used as a unit of weight as well. And that, in my opinion, is unfortunate. We do that mistake, for example, in Germany, where we confuse, where we use kilograms correctly for the mass, but we also use it for weight and even for force. And it bugs me because it's not. It's the Newton. However, we actually do the same problem, the, the same mistake in the United States. We use pounds for force and weight, which is correct. It is a unit of force, but we all also use it for mass, which is not correct. It's actually in the in the American system, the slug, perhaps a unit you have never heard of before. And it spells like the animal slug. There it is. And oh, yeah, my my Google on my. On my browser and on my computers is in German. All right, but I got to the 
English one here, so I click on slug this ambiguation, and I'm going to go to, hopefully very quickly, don't want to waste your time here, where'd it go, so, there it is, slug unit, there we go. So the slug is a derived unit of mass system of measurements in the U.S. United States customary measurement system. So this one, if you look at this one here, slug unit, in the American system, it's actually not the pound that is the unit for mass, it's what's called the slug. It's actually relatively big. Somewhere here it says 14.6 kilograms, respectively 32 pound mass. If we want to use mass, we, should, we ought to put a little M there for next to the pound. So that's the slug. Back to this one here. So yeah, we make that kind of confusion between mass and weight in both mass, weight and force in both systems of measurement, at least in, in, in our everyday lives. In physics, I always pay attention to it. Obviously, kilograms is mass, newtons is weight and force. And what they also say here, no matter where you are on Earth, well, if you have two kilograms here, which is about four and a half pounds, or about 20 newtons, well, anywhere else on Earth, that same two kilograms is still 2.5 pounds and 20 newtons. So they're kind of a little bit interchangeable because we're almost all the time on the surface of the Earth. All right, scroll down here. Again, here for following, I said determine the most reasonable value for each weight. Aspirin tablet, 300 milligrams. So a fraction of a gram, which is also a fraction of an ounce. An elephant, yeah, let's go with 5,000 kilograms, which is about 10,000 pounds. A baseball, 145 grams, which is in the neighborhood of, is it six ounces, five ounces maybe? An orange, also 115 grams, that looks like four ounces. A pencil, six grams, that's kind of like a fraction of an ounce, like a quarter. An automobile, 1,300 kilograms, that's in the neighborhood of close to 3,000 pounds. All right, let's see if this was the last unit. Or if I have another one here. Nope, temperature. There we go. So temperature, Celsius, Fahrenheit. I have posted another video that I'd like you to watch for just a minute where the instructor actually tells us, hey, there is an advantage for the Fahrenheit scale. To me, there really is no advantage or disadvantage between the two because we're not converting from the Celsius to something else. We're not converting from the Fahrenheit to something else. We don't, have strange, we don't have strange conversion factors like 12 or 3 or 16, that kind of thing. We don't have them in the Fahrenheit. It's just Fahrenheit from 0 to whatever and then into the negatives. Celsius, the same thing. Of course, we do have the scientific one. The Celsius isn't the scientific one either. It's the one we use in everyday life. It's actually the Kelvin that we use in science. And if we are in the American system, where we also wouldn't then use the Fahrenheit scientifically, we would actually use the Rankin. And the Rankin and the Kelvin both have the advantage that they have zero Kelvins being, or zero Rankins being, the coldest temperature possible. So, yeah, and then this one here, I would almost call this one here the sun, I would tell it in Kelvins, which is 5,300 Kelvins. Actually, 5,700 Kelvins. All right, again, let's see what I have here. Determine the most reasonable value for each temperature. 37 Celsius, ice cube, zero degrees Celsius, boiling water. That's 212 Fahrenheit or 100 Celsius. On a summer day, 23 degrees Celsius. Yeah, do you, do you want 70 degrees, 75 degrees Celsius? That's in an oven. That's almost boiling water. Winter day, yes, three degrees Celsius. That's actually still above freezing. That's zero degrees Celsius is the freezing. Lava, 700 degrees Celsius, which is in the neighborhood of a little bit of a thousand, maybe 1,500 Fahrenheit. All right, let's see if there is one section left. I don't think so. Nope. Oh, yeah, and this, this is what we had earlier. The meter, the kilogram, actually, and then the other is the temperature, which would be Kelvin's technically in the mass, which would be kilograms. All right.